Good Friday evening, race fans. Jimmy McNerney alongside Dan Cronin as we take a look into this eight race card here in Rockin' Friday at the track. A lot of going on tonight, Dan. We have the dollar dogs, dollar beers, one dollar bets, pick six, uh, six, single six, pick six carryover, almost $26,000. And by the looks of the weather outside tonight, I think we might have to change our usual uh, handicapping. Well, yeah, if it's like last night, they couldn't pass a horse, really. Yeah. I mean, it, the speed was incredible last night. I think five out of eight went wire to wire, and the other two were stalking close. So uh, I wouldn't be taking any deep, deep closers tonight and yeah. expecting them to win. Now, maybe it'll be Could different, happen, but right. with the rain and the wind, I don't – I don't think they're going to be coming from too far out of it. So I want horses that are going to be close. Yeah, that's how the same approach I took tonight. So eight races on the card. Race one starts the 50 cent pick five, and it's a maiden claimer going a mile. A couple of scratches. The four and seven are out. Late jockey chains on the one eight to Miranda. But this race, I think you can take it down to just a couple of horses. How do you see this race? Yeah, in the pick five, I'm just going to use the two logical horses. I, I think Ice Chest with Machado, if he'll, you know, let him run out of there a little yeah. bit coming out of that sprint. Uh, kind of got left in the gate, didn't get out real good last time. So if the horse pops it tonight, should be able to be near the lead or, you know, so. be able to work a trip. And then the five figures to be on the lead. And Concolvis went to the lead a couple times last night. So he understands the track. So I think he's going to send. So Golden Ready, in my book, when they straighten the bend on the backside, he's going to be in front. The one should be, or the two ice chest should be stalking. I don't see anybody else in here that can win this race. I don't either. That's uh, the two I narrowed it down to. And it'd be too, I was between the two and five, and the only reason I went to the five on top was simply I think Leandro's a smarter rider, just to be quite frank. He understands track bias. He understands the way a race develops. He's very smart. And uh, I just think Golden Ready on the class drop, I think Leandro, like you said, last night, he recognized the bias. He took it to him in a couple of races last night. And I'm going to put this horse on top just because, like you said, number two, uh, Ice Chest on the stretch out, Shinso Speed, but Machado hasn't been getting horses out of the gate very good here lately, we've noticed. And you see, this one was bothered at the start. It seems like something always happens at the start to to compromise it, and I'm not laying all my eggs in his basket, so I'm going to use the five as well. And then after that, it's a it's a complete guess. I went for the 12, Southern Humor. I just thought Rodney's a smart rider. He's another one that understands pace. I, I think he'll send this this horse and try, try to get out there too, especially from that outside draw. He's got to use him a little bit to save some ground. My stab in the dark was the one in the, the one. third spot just because the kid might just – hold on for dear life, open the gate, and go flying out of there. So I, I don't know. I mean, it looks like the two or five right. to me. I, I the, tried to find somebody that could come running if right. they both stagger because they're both sprinters going around. You can't find one. I just, I, I, I mean, I, if somebody staggers home, I, don't, I just don't they know. Beat, they beat us. I don't I'm know. only going two five in there. You yeah. I'll, just, I'll just bet the low take I'll pick four instead of the low take I'll pick five if I blow. Right. You know. That's a good angle. And speaking of that low takeout pick four, that starts in race two we're going to talk about next. Now, just a 14% takeout, and these have been paying very well, very well all meeting. I mean, even one the other day, I don't think there was higher than a 7 or $8 horse, and it still came back a couple hundred bucks. But yep. it starts in race two, and in race two, there's two scratches, numbers of four and of five. That race is sponsored by the Kentucky Equine Management Internship Program. So we're down to a field of six in race number two to go five and a half furlongs. It starts the early pick four, and uh, I end up going with – I was between the six and seven, and I went for the seven proven warrior uh, on top just because uh, Kim Hammond's having a very good meet. The horse will show speed. Now, Bresno is a horse for the course, three wins from six starts. On the class drop, gets the top jock. Cahill does very well, five to one. Those are my top two choices in here. Dan, and after that, I end up going for number two, Artagon. Another thing, same scenario. Yeah. Speed, Prescott, I had to use the horse for third. How'd you go? Well, I, I like the four, then the scratches came out. I went to the six. I, I think the six is a very possible single. I can see why you said that. Because the, other, the next three races are pretty wide open to where you might be able to get your price. So five to one's not going to happen with the scratches. You're right. probably looking at two to one. Uh, you know, three three wins here. The eight thousand at Presque Isle is so much better than five thousand here. Mm -hmm. So I think Bresno is a complete standout. Now, if they come up speed biased, he's not going to be on the lead. Right. He's going to be stalking, but with him and Ez, should be stalking to the outside. 
I, you know, I, I think he'll get the perfect trip. And, you know, after that, the two, seven, and eight all got chances, I think. I yeah. mean, you could go to any of them. I don't like the rider on the seven, so that's why I didn't put him in the top three. But, you know, the horse can win if the horse makes the lead. Uh, the eight, I, I just don't know what level we're at. Gulfstream Park West really hasn't done that well no. here. But good rider, good outside post, drop in class, likes to win. Has, yeah, it you know, comes from a good bar, six. but decent works at the training center. I mean, I could see definitely using the horse, but uh, I, I'm like you, Gulfstream Park West anymore. I mean, what is that, you know, level down there? They're Belterra South. Mountaineer South. I mean, yeah. maybe not quite bad as Mountaineer, but it, it's not great. It, yeah, it's not good. So how many are you going to use in the pick five here? Pick five, I will use two horses, six and seven. Okay. Because I'm like you, I'll spread, I'm going to spread a lot deeper in, uh, especially the next race. I think I'm using, and, and I should use more because I'm going against my rule, but I, to save money, I, I'm cutting a couple here. So race number three, the race we're talking about, I think you have to spread here. We'll see what Danny thinks. And it starts a single six, and don't forget, there is almost a $26,000 carryover. Free money already in the pool. You want to get involved, just a 20-cent base bet. And last night, it was a pretty logical sequence. Multiple people, people hit it, but, and so it carried, but they still got $5,600 a piece. That's crazy, isn't for, it? And, you know, probably didn't have to go very deep. No, you didn't. Now, I'm, I'm completely against the one here. I hope that's not your top pick. I'm using the horse just because speed okay. and inside, I would use him third. I'm going to use the horse in my pick fours and fives. I just didn't want Sonny Leone in the, on the rail. Has speed, but I don't think the horse can make the lead. So now you get buried. Then you're trapped. And, and you're trapped. And, and the horse can't close. So I said try to bet against that horse. I thought the two had a little chance. I mean, obviously we're guessing there, but I would use the two in the pick five. And I'm spread like crazy. I, I think the five's the top pick because of speed coming off the grass, the real golf stream, then to Indiana, <laughs> then to Belterra, and a good optional claimer. I don't know what happened, but obviously got hurt or something happened, laid up a couple months, drops in class, good pilot. I mean, I, I think Storm Temple Pilot is a solid four to one bet if the horse would stay four to one. But in the pick five, I'm taking a couple other long shots. I think the six has a chance, chasing by, I don't know how to pronounce that. Yeah. And then appealing Julia, if all these speed go, she's going to drop back. She's going to come flying down the middle. Now, I don't know if she's good enough, but I think she fits. she's going to get the perfect setup. I agree with you 100%. She's 12 to 1. And uh, Zaniga takes back over for Brownfield. He's been on vacation. He's picked up where he left off last night. Good dropper for Brownfield. They, they went wire to wire, in fact, last night at a big price, Manford. This one has two trips over the track off that freshening. I like her as well. I'm using her. In fact, I'm, I'm using one, two, four, five, six, seven, nine. So, <laughs> yeah, it's a ton. Uh, yeah. But my top pick in here, I went against the five. Just the only reason, the drop scares me. This trainer, she's not one. I think that she's a good trainer. But I don't think she really – is like some trainers where they'll get real aggressive and jam a horse mm -hmm. uh, in, in a spot to, to get the win. I, I think she kind of waits and, 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 you know, slowly enters them, you know, real aggressively. But is a good owner. Pocket Aces might have just said, hey, let's jam this mare in, get a win with her. Somebody takes her, great. Yep. Uh, you know, we'll just take an edge. The purses are good enough now. You, you win, you get 7,200 plus the five, so that's 12,000. And uh, so, so I do like the horse. I went against her. I went for number four, Curious Ruth, just as my top pick. Jimenez for Mark Thomas. This one may have needed the last race, and that was an open five. Gets a little bit of class relief with this dated condition race. And uh, I like Curious Ruth a lot. I'm using her on top with your top pick. And then I threw in the one. Those are my top three picks, four, five, one. But I like the horses you said, the six and nine. In fact, like I told you, I'm using everybody in the race but the three and eight. And that does start the single six, ladies and gentlemen. Don't forget, almost $26,000 in free money in that wager. Now, the fourth race has a scratch of the six, pistol box. And uh, it's a field of eight remain to go a mile. Good starter allowance race to go a mile. And uh, how, how do you see this race, Dan? I thought it was a very competitive race. But it, it is a very competitive race, and there's some speed in here. I mean, Testy Kitten is one of my favorite horses. I think the horse has been in over his head at this age the last two starts. The last start, we probably should have shown that backtrack, the last start was eliminated. I mean, the gate. as soon as the gate opened, was eliminated. So that line doesn't really show. It says unprepared. A horse, it wasn't a horse unprepared. It was, 
horse got crushed when they went open the gate and started hopping and then circled the whole field and was in front when they turned for home. But it's too much to overcome. Yeah, I mean, he don't run like that. He wants to be up near the pace and just kind of plot along, and I think that's what's going to happen tonight. I think Testy Kitten's got a big shot. Um, I'm going to spread a little bit in here. I think Glad to Be Here is going to try to go the lead to seven. I think, so too. I think the eight's going to come late. But I think the two ransack is the horse that we just don't know anything about. I mean, Make it a sizable class drop. I mean, that is a cliff drop. Yeah. I mean, that is a gigantic, gigantic cliff drop. So if he can sit back, blast home, hopefully the track's not too biased, but six to one is a Good heck price. of a price for Good me. Price. You get a um, horse like that home in a sequence like this, you're getting paid. Yeah, so I, I would definitely use that horse. The three's got a little chance. I mean, I. I got to use two, three, five, seven, and eight in the pick five. So I'm pretty deep after the first two legs. I'm not deep. The mm -hmm. next two legs, I am deep. And then the fifth, I'm not going to use too many. That's the maiden special we'll talk about next. I agree with you in here at seven. Glad to be here. Like you said, I think we'll make the pace. I took this horse, Ron Brown's three wins from four starts this meet. The meet passed the holiday meet. He just missed Lee Nona on the final night of the meet when Ramsey beat him. But Doing very well. Troy Newton's horse, I think, is one's going to need some pace in here. We'll come running late. And uh, then the two I used all the same reasons as you. Plus, when I was walking in, B.B. Niehaus told me he liked number two ransack. Said it was one of his best bets of the night. B.B. said Did that. Tell you now, that? you got to understand, I just came out of the room that I've been in for four hours with B.B. Mm -hmm. He's over there whining that he hadn't catched a ticket all day. So I said, well, here, I'll bet you 50 to win on a horse I know can't lose. Handed him the ticket. He looks up and sees the odds and goes back and cancels it <laughs> and bets the exact. I said, I thought you said you wanted to, to cash a ticket. Right. He, he said, did. He cashed it. He said, well, I don't bet three to fives. I said, well, you have been cashed a ticket all day. You said you wanted to cash a ticket. This horse cannot lose. Mm -hmm. He said, well, I don't want the 80. I said, you'd rather throw the 50 on the ground. Mm -hmm. He said, it's not going to help <laughs> it was in too deep. So the horse wins by 10 in a hand ride. He blows the exacta. He blows the exacta. So to make it worse, he then goes up and makes like a $50 exacta or whatever at Tampa. Wins. Is that the one that got DQ'd? He's high-fiving, and he gets DQ'd. The, f the first horse to get DQ'd on the turn since the Kentucky Derby in like 10,000 races. Right. Because nobody gets DQ'd on the turn in North American racing. BB does. BB got DQ'd. That's a, t that's a tough five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> at least Chuck got put up. So some, somebody right. won when BB right. got taken down. That's so good. at least one of the guys He's trying won. to put him on the right track. I was, I, he said he wanted to cash a ticket. I said, you can call me a chalk eater all you, you want, 50. but if, if the horse can't lose, he's, it was a four-horse field. He's a dirt horse that's win stakes races at the fairgrounds for Steve Asmussen and against three turf horses. I said, might as well just be a canner. I mean, right. you're stealing. He, yeah, he I don't. I don't mind those. I, I don't mind to eat a chalk every now and then, especially if. I mean, if I throw fifty dollars on the ground right now and I close my eyes and I look, there's eighty that I pick. I'm not gonna say, oh, I'm only picking up eighty. I mean, I just tried to help him at least pay for a bucket of beer or something. Yeah, well, he's got alligator arms. We all know <laughs> that. So, anyway, coming up, race number. Well, we got through the first four. Now, the fifth race. This is a race that ends, and we speak about this all the time. Any race you want to be right here at Turfway when you're betting these kind of wagers. It's the fifth, yeah. ends the pick five early, pick four, starts the late pick four. And it's a good good race, made in three-year-old, a special way to go six and a half furlongs. We have a lot of horses in here making their first starts. We have some coming from good barns, we have some regally bred. And we got a horse that's gonna take a lot of money and I know you're against it. So tell us who, who, who you ended up on. I really like the eight autopilot. Off that first race, I can see one. When, when I went back and watched the replay, first of all, my man Flintstone came out came out of the hottest race in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. There's like seven horses that that came back and won out of that my man Flintstone race. Mm -hmm. So he comes here and airs them, wins easy. He was throttled down. He, he would have won by ten if they'd have let him run. But this horse came flying, and nobody else was running. I mean, this horse was really, really running at the end. So, hey, I don't want dead closers, but I'm not sure this horse is a dead closer. Mm -hmm. Just got I left agree. in the gate first time. Just happened time. to have to do that. First so time. now second time out on the outside, what if he breaks a length or two out of it in a, in a stranglehold and just sits there? That's what I want. I think autopilot is a great bet at 7-2, to two, and I am 1,000% against the Wesley War here. Okay, why is that? 
I bet on this horse first time out of Keenan. So did I. He was supposed to be a runner. My note is common. Do not bet back if anything in the race. Okay. Common. That means to me, right. I mean, unless he got a lot better, and he's yeah. going to be six to five, mm -hmm. unless he got a lot better in the last six months off of a layoff. Now, granted, he's got a great post on the 11 hole to just kind of sit there and go when he wants, but I, I, don't, I just – I don't like anything about this horse. That race was so slow. It was one of the worst maiden special weight races of the meet. At it was one of one of the weaker fields, that is for sure. I mean, and that, that's Alex a good thing Arthur. about being able to put your own notes in. And you right. may have forgot the horse in your head, but as soon as you see it, it triggers oh, yeah. everything in your mind. Like, I remember this race. I remember this horse. So it, it, it pays yep. to do your homework like that and be uh, be real diligent about that. And you don't even have to go back and watch the replay really to remember the horse. Cause, yeah, you know, as, soon, as soon as I saw the note, I said, I know yeah. exactly who this is. I remember was. the race now, too. Alec and Arthur, that was a Hancock. Johnny Unleash, that was second. It did yep. come back and win. That was Eric Foster. But that horse didn't come back and win until, I think, a maiden special weight at Ellis. So I, I could see why I end up using horse on top, though, just because uh, Wesley Ward's on fire. And uh, the horse did work a pretty good work here the other day. Now, I, I like the eight a lot. I was in between those two. Just because this horse drew to the outside is the only reason I put it on top. But the eight, like you said, was up against the right. last start. I understand, and, I understand using the 11. I right. get it as a better. I just... When I'm trying to cash, I'm so deep in the third and fourth race that I'm like, do I really want the well, even money shot that I don't like anyway? Right. But hey, it's your money. I, I get it. If you want to throw right. him in, I, I, I would never tell somebody not to. Right. But I mean, the same reason though, why wouldn't you throw the 12 in? I agree. Churchill, one start, $150,000 maiden race. Colebrook, bet the six to one. Ran a nice even race, a good solid 48 figure. I, I think the 12. You get a lot more value. I understand that. And I'm, I'm like you, though. I like the eight. The only thing we didn't mention, too, this horse has been gelded since his first race. Right. So now, mine to be on business a little more. Clean break. And, and the, you know, the horse does have a lot of upside. And the, like you said, this horse is seven to two. And if Wesley takes a lot of money, and money shows up on that horse or any of these other first-time starters. There could be a first-time starter in here that the money shows up on. You might get a little more than seven to two on autopilot. Right. So, I, I like the horse. I'm going to throw on a first-time starter just for the simply connection reasons in here. Number two, hard target, and the work pattern isn't all that bad either. Just went six furlongs, fourteen and two. We've had some races that uh, hasn't ran here. Yeah, that, in, that's in a good time. work. Here. So that's a serious work. Mike Foster. Uh, is the owner for Doug Callens, well-bred son of More Than Ready, Rodney Prescott. I'm going to go 11-8-2, and Dan's going to go 8-6-12. and 12. How, why, why are you going to throw in the 6? Let's just so kind of pick your brain here a little bit. Long shot turn back because of six and a half. Six and a half furlongs, I like taking horses coming out of miles if I can, you know, because they're all going to be dog-tired that last half right. a furlong. So the horse has already had a trip over the track at a mile. Now he's going to sit in the back might blast home if all these babies start staggering. So, and he's going to be a big price. You know, I, he, I see that. I see why. You know, I could throw in the two, like you said, the six. I could throw in the 12. You could probably start making the case. Now, what about that. the 10? What do you do with the 10? I don't know. Senna Curlin out of a pulpit mare comes from a good barn maker in Garcia. I, I don't know. Been working at the training center. You know what when I like? When I see – now, maker has strings everywhere. One of the things I like when I see, like, say, at Indiana Downs or even here, which they, they just closed this week, when Maker still has another string and he has some horses with him with, at his main barn, main string, I feel like he likes his horses more. This one was at the Spectrum until you'll see, what, mid-December at least. He was here, so he kept the horse here. He's had horses here since, you know, 1st of November when they let him in. So I, I think he probably likes the horse a little bit. So, I mean, how deep can you go? You can right. probably start making a case for everybody. You're going to have to cut somewhere. You're going to make decisions. You know? And that's why the fifth race is so hard because you got the, the last leg of the pick five or the early pick four and the first leg of the late pick four that you can't be wrong in this race. So you might take a couple of horses so, that you wouldn't normally take just to make sure you so don't So if you're betting your pick, your pick five, and now we know we're going short in the first leg with just two. Second leg, we're not that bad, but the third and fourth were spread. Say you use a couple here. Now, you're still live for those couple. Now, you're going to start a late one. Now, the late one, it's going to shorten up because we only have, you know, this yep. is our pick four. 
Would you add some horses in here just for your late pick four that you not use in, in the early ones? Yeah, or the early pick I, I would add the two. Probably, I'd probably take two, six, eight, ten, twelve, mm -hmm. just to make sure that if I got the pick five cash into the eight, because I know I'll have the eight. Right. I might use the twelve in a ticket. I'll have to. I have to be right in the first and second race to have the, the 12 alive, too. Uh, I think it's pretty short after this race, at least until the last race. I yeah, I, so. I just – well, we'll get to that in a second in the seventh race, but I, I like a horse a lot in the sixth. Do you? Yeah. We'll hope, see if we're – Hopefully it's a different horse, so right. we're not three to five. Right. Well, I like a horse in the seventh. You probably know who it is. Uh, on paper, it's pretty easy to see who I probably like. You know me. But we're going to go to the sixth race. This is a – Condition claimer to go six and a half furlongs for horses who haven't won a race in a full 12 month calendar year. Six and a half furlongs and in race six. Just checking the changes. Again, number six, Durrett Lane, is scratched. I, I think number nine, Nothing Faster, is probably. Yeah, it is the horse you're going to say. I was going to guess. I didn't know if you're laughing at the name or the fact that I like the horse. Because every time I look at the name, I think to myself. Who's it named after? No, I think, <laughs> how did this horse get approved? <laughs> But anyway, <laughs> um, the nine with Jimenez, I mean, yeah, it's the same as you. Got to sit close, right? Yeah. Got to blast home on the outside, second off the layoff. The horse was the best horse last race. I and like Green Hill. I like Jimenez. I like Del Cruz off this meet. Oh. We've talked at talk today at what least an three horses today. Yeah. But in the last two weeks, horses that he's came off of, it's, it's amazing that the ones that are winning. And we've already talked. This is the third horse tonight that he had ridden that we like. So... I mean, it's a, he doesn't ride this track very good. He wins everywhere else, but this track he cannot ride. Yeah, this track. I don't know if it's just the mounts he's getting. Yeah. I, I don't know, but he's just not winning. And yeah. Jimenez, who we said this a couple times already over the last couple weeks, I think Jimenez might be the best turfway poly track rider ever. I, I would agree. I mean, name one that's been here for an entire meet that's better. That's had those incredible. Now I know Joe Rosario might be the best of all time right. on the poly. When he set records at Keeneland, when he would come there and ride the poly, Le Peru was real good on the poly. But here, I mean, I now I'm sure as the purses continue to rise and they, we knock this coming, down yeah. and we build it back up, and if Lannery stays like we're hearing he might do, and some of these other Kentucky guys stay, yeah, now it might change. But for now, right? I just don't see. I mean, he is really really good on the poly and i think he's going to just sit with this nut and faster and i think he's just going to go to the lead at the head of the lane and draw away and that's my single you are going to single yeah and i might save a little with the 10 but it's just hard for me to justify doubling my ticket to take salazar that, that was my next question i was just going to ask if you look to his right i mean too bad we can't make like a 90 cent ticket and a 10 cent <laughs> ticket right you know, because if you add them and you spend That's 50 right. cents on both of them. Uh, you know, here's – and then plus this uh, – Man, it's like betting on a pitcher to get a hit in a Reds game. I mean, I, I don't <laughs> understand. I mean, it's just – I don't know. Maybe That's the, a good one. May, maybe That's the kid third off the layoff in the perfect post position. Maybe the nine will falter and he'll be able to just sweep wide. The horse is a just, decent horse, you know, and I think the last couple of races are pretty good, and, and I think – you know, if there was maybe a different pilot the last couple of times, the results might have been different. I'm like you. Uh, it, it's I, I know it's horse racing, but I'm like you. When you have guys you don't like, it's not good for you. They cost you money. They hinder yeah. your chances. I'd like to sit. I'd like to sit with a trainer sometime. And I've done this a couple of times downstairs, and they don't want to answer me. If you're a trainer and your livelihood depends on winning races, why would you ride bad riders? Mm -hmm. Cost the same. If you're a manager for the Cincinnati Reds and you have a 25-man roster to go up there and pinch hit to win the game for you, are you gonna are you gonna pinch hit the pitcher? Right. I mean, I, I just don't understand it. So, I, I don't know. I don't know why they do it. I'd love to hear explanations from guys on, you know, mm -hmm. favors in the morning. I, I don't know. It's probably but it's probably I, the to me. Way. If I can get now, if, if they say, hey, I can't get anybody else. I tried to get the top three. They wouldn't take the call. I get it. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I. When I get a four to one shot, I would think in Calvis or Serpa or one of these other guys would Franklin, Machado, somebody would have taken that mount. But I don't know, maybe Salazar will surprise us and win tonight. <laughs> I got to throw the horse in now.
Yeah, I, I, the, I like the horse. I like the horse. We'll, I did not use the horse in we'll my be top on them three. Bad takes. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah, for sure. I'm gonna throw the horse in now just because of that. Because anytime I start when that happens, they every they every happen. time I do it. Yeah. So who's the horse you're taking on top? What's his name? The what was it the nine? Yeah, the nine. Okay. Uh, I like the nine too. I'm going to use number five, Royal by Nature, uh, Sunny Leon, as my second choice. I'll use this horse as well. I'm not going any deeper than that. Like I said, I may throw in the ten, but I was trying to make a case for the seven, Jenny's Regal Man. This one ran a very good race last time, and I, 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 the horse had some tough luck. Probably was the best horse that day. Now going six and a half on the turn back, maybe so. But at twenty to one, the nine, nothing faster is going to take you know the money. Obviously, I'm going to add a price in my tries. And I'm going to throw that horse in. 957 for me, 9101 for Dan in race number six. Now, the seventh race is an allowance race for Phillies and Mares to go one mile, field of 11. And uh, how do you see this race? I'm going uh, short here. I am think I'm singling. I know you're going to single the two. I, I'm just scared to death of this horse. I mean, on paper. A lot of, lot of lines for a six-year-old mare. On paper, he just looks like, or she looks like, she towers over this field. Mm -hmm. But how many times, and not only at Turfway in my life, but back in the old River Downs days, that these New York shippers ship in here at three to five and not get a call? And I'm, I'm, I'm scared to death of this horse off the off all these layoff lines. Chad Brown finally said, I mean, what kind of trainer is going to give up on a horse that's run six straight 80 plus numbers? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, why would you? I mean, unless the horse has something wrong. Now, Eric uh, Reed's a, a really good trainer around here. Yeah, he is. And obviously, there's something with her because, like we said, she's six years old. She's only raced 10 times. But when she runs, she shows up. I mean, she, on paper, she's better than these, but you're going to get three to five. Uh, three to one silly. That's, that's just silly. This horse is going to be three to five. I mean, anybody that can read numbers can see three to five. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I think the seven could upset him Hit with Jimenez. Got some back 70s numbers. Carrasso is one of my favorite trainers. Wiseman off. It's like going from the pitcher to the to the star hitter, right? Alvados gets to hit, you know, with Jimenez. I think that's a big move. I don't really like the eight, but the eight should have some speed at least. The, the nine's going to show some speed. So I think there's enough speed in here to make it legit. I think the one's going to go. Yeah. So, you know, maybe somebody gets loose and keeps running. But I, I don't know. I, I, I think the two may win. I'm just scared. I can't single. I, I got to at least take the seven. The two and the seven, at least. Yep. I, I like the seven a little bit, too. That's my fourth choice in the race. I, I put the two on top. I, I understand the being, you know, a little cautious there. I just thought, I know she's lightly raced. Anytime she shows up, any there's not a race on there if she repeats that performance that won't run out the screen from this field. I know. So, uh, been working out here and uh, at Mercury to training center of Eric Reed's. And uh, I, I'm just taking a shot because I feel like I don't know where he got the horse, how he got the horse, if he bought her on the sale. But I'd love to hear that story. But I just think if you have buyer and you, it's your own horse, he owns it, Kay's his wife, you can take an edge and run it for whatever you want. If I mean, so, and he, he, he has a three life. So he likes to go to the Lowen Trace, $48,500. He must like her to me. So I'm saying on her, I understand why you would uh, add some other horses too. First I'm, of all, I'm just saying the leading rider, that's it. Some yeah. other people are, you know, majority of people are probably going to single too. When you look at the sequence, right. where else are you going to find a single unless nothing faster? I'm going to use a couple just in case against that one myself. But I can see using seven. I like the horse twin channel, Stephen Lister. I'm going to throw that one in. And then the one AP Princess, first off the claim. Sippy does very good. Show speed, inside draw. Weather outside suggests inside to be good and speedy be really good. So that's why I threw that one in. And uh, currently we do have uh, 29 minutes to post. That's the first seven. We'll take a little break here. We'll come back with the changes and then our thoughts on the final race of this Friday card, race eight, the closing leg of the single six with that big jackpot carryover. But first, ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I ask that you please rise. Kindly remove your caps as we honor America with the playing of our national anthem.
Good evening once again, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome into Turfway Park. The windows are open on the Rockin' Friday card here at the track. $1 beers, $1 dogs, $1 wind play show bets, and east of Austin we will be rocking the stage later on. If you'll take out those programs, we'll go over tonight's late program changes. Race one kicks off the pick five. Jockey change on the one. Runaway Amos make the rider Rogelio Miranda. Miranda picks up the 1A. Scratch number four, press on regardless. Scratch number seven, Old Fort. Numbers four and seven, scratch from the opener. Race number two starts the early pick four, just 14% takeout. There is a overweight at number three, Darwish. That rider three pounds over. Scratch number four, no lemon, no lime. Scratch number five, Tim's Hope. Numbers four and five as scratched out of race number two. Race three starts the single six with that big carryover just shy of 26,000 bucks. Overweight at number eight, Sanctuary Spot. The Apprentice is five pounds overweight. In the fourth race, scratch number six, Pistol Box. Number six, Pistol Box has been scratched from race four. In the fifth race, start of the late pick four, please be aware that number nine, El Franco, contrary to the program, will indeed race on Lasix. Number nine, El Franco, will run on Lasix. Scratch the also's, number 13, Barbaroni, and the 14, Prince Jersey Town. In the sixth race, jockey change on number four, Smoltz, make the rider Emmanuel Ramirez. Scratch number six, Durrett Lane. And the jockey at number 10, private spot, is four pounds over the listed weight. No changes in the seventh. You'll turn to the eighth and the final. We do have a jockey change on the three, Crescent Warrior. Make it Malcolm Franklin. Scratch the 11, Amani's Kitten. Be aware the 13, Promise, draws in, will race and take out the 14, my halo. Those are the changes at this time. Any changes coming in throughout the balance of the program, I'll get those to you as they do so. 24 minutes, good luck. Good evening, race fans. Track announcer Jimmy McNerney alongside expert handicapper Dan Cronin. We got through the first seven races. I didn't jinx you, did I? Yeah, you just killed me. And I'm having a good day, too. Oh. Don't, don't kill me for tonight. Jinx, I got a lot of bets. jinx removed. No, no, no. <laughs> I can call off the jinx. It's real easy. I can put it on, too. And that's why earlier when we talked about the 10, couldn't win because of Jock. That, to me, is jinxing, so I'm using him now. You're using him plus the seven pounds, right? Oh, and he's overweight. The apprentice is riding without the apprentice weight. Okay. So that's why I'm going to use him now. <laughs> anyway, eighth and final is a non two claiming event to go six and a half furlongs. We take out the 11 and 14, 13 runs. Get a good jockey change here for the three. Crescent Warrior, Malcolm Franklin picks up the ride. And uh, I think this race is a spread race for me in the pick four. How'd you see it? I agree. I mean, I think it's a very tough race. I, I like a long shot on top, and I noticed Who's you that? don't even have him in the, in the top four. Uh, no, I didn't really look too hard I mean, at the 13, so the 13 I understand throwing in. You got him on top. I, I get it. I didn't really look too hard at that horse. He, he's got a chance, but, but I like the nine. I, I like the turn back. You know, we got six and a half furlong race, nine winners of two life for five. Right. This horse just ran for 75. Good, solid trainer, third off the layoff, split the field last time. You know, it was a 12-horse field, ran fourth, now gets the drop in class, now gets the cut back in distance. I, I think the nine has right. a humongous look. I, I can see why. I'm using the horse. How deep are you going? Well, I got five on the I got all written on one ticket, which I probably, probably will have on the one ticket. But uh, I would think at least the two, eight, nine, 
13, at least those four. Yeah, I like those two. Those are my top four. I'm going to use the three as well. I, I like the nine. I like the 13 as well, promise. Now, stuck out to the way outside. That doesn't bother me going six and a half furlongs. And uh, uh, I think they'll, they'll want to be there anyway. Johnny McKee has the call for Tracy Young. And uh, for second, I'm going to throw in number two, Grade. This one was the best horse in the last race. Should have won. Hopefully they learned something from that uh, trip and oh, gets an, yeah, gets an extra that. furlong this time and uh, might get a little better odds than the last time, you know, with with uh, this deep a field. But number two, great. I like a lot in here. And then number eight, early retirement. We both, you and I, have this horse in the third position. Has a trip over the track and uh, – I don't mind that the horse was wide last start out. The horse will show speed. Now, who's going to go to the lead in here? I think that probably the eight. Right? Yeah, I think the eight's got to go. Maybe you'll get some pressure from grade with the extra furlong. But again, I don't think this. I don't think this jockey is enough speed rider. I don't think he gets him out quick enough. He's a good rider, but um, I don't think the horse will get much company out there. You know, by the two who on paper looks like the main opposition out top. Now, lucky look and gets Jose Raquel me. I think. Uh, I think this horse will be a little more forwardly placed than last start, but I just don't know who's going to go with the eight. That's why I throw the horse in there. I think he might hang around. You know, he does speed and fade, but I thought he might hang around for a piece of it. Yeah, I'm with you. If you I think you lock it up if you take the two, the three, the eight, nine, and 13. The three is one of them horses that I have bet on so many times. This horse owes me so much money. Oh, my God, his horse owes me money. I can't tell you how many times I've bet on this horse, and he, he always just ranges up like he's going to run, and he hangs. never runs. He just hangs like a bad suit, and that's it. Yeah. And then the next time you see it in the form, if you don't remember it, then you bet on him again. And I, fi I finally said enough's enough last time, and he hung like a suit again. Yes, he does. I mean, look at his record. 21 starts, one win, eight seconds. That's a hanger. Yeah, he just makes that move on a turn. Now, maybe the turn back in might distance help might help him. Drop, I like turn backs on back, this track. Fly home on the outside. But I, I really I, – really, I think they missed the odds on the nine. Looking lucky. I, I always handicap without the odds first, and I kind of put my preliminary picks together. And then once they come out with the odds and the numbers, I make sure I get everything right. And then I just kind of make sure I go down and – Am I keying in on too many favorites? Because I don't want to do that here. Right. You know, and I'm trying to jockey that around. And I thought this horse would be three, three and a half to one. I was I was very, very surprised to see. Because when you look back and you see 67 number, 65 number, 65 number, why on earth would all of a sudden at Turfway for 5,000? I mean, he went off three to one in the same condition. Messiah was a well meant horse that day from the Moquette bar. Right, and all hands on deck came out of there and won. So I don't I don't know. And then the trainer's hot. I I don't know. I, I mean, I think the horse is going to be three or four to one, but being hidden at the end of a pick four is perfect. Right. Because yeah. the people that just run to the bottom of the they program right here, yeah. and start, he's not on the program, so you're going to be able to get that extra, you yeah. know, incentive a little bit in the pick fours and pick threes before you can see any action on him. So... But I, I think if Raquel May just sits mid-pack, doesn't try to come up the rail, shoots about two or three wide, I think this horse can really have a big, big chance to pay $20. Well, hopefully he's in the jocks room listening to you because you just gave him the perfect race riding instructions here. Look, lucky, lucky looking. Lucky looking. That one's tough to say. Lucky looking. Lucky looking. Eight to one. Eight to one on top. Danny's going nine to eight. I'm going 13 to eight. Again, eight races on the card. We got the pick five. We have the two pick fours, races two and five, and the single six, almost 26,000 bucks in the pool, free money going in. That starts in race three. Danny, do you have any final thoughts or a, a best bet? I think the best bet of the night is autopilot because is that the I- the most logical winner? No, yes. the most logical winner to me is the seventh race complicit. Right. Now, if he doesn't fire, but he's gonna be three to five. I, I think nothing faster is a good bet in the sixth. I think the fifth race autopilot, you're going to get four to one. I, I really believe you're going to get four to one. And if you can get that, I, I mean, I really think that horse got a big, big, big chance. There you have it from the man. 17 minutes to post race number one. Good luck tonight.